This is John Lighton of Sable Systems. I'd like to welcome you to a quick exploration of some Prometheon data using our Expedata data analysis environment. In front of you right now, you can see the energy expenditure file, or channel as we call it, of a single mouse. In this particular case, it's mouse number one. Here we have active. This channel is kilocalories per hour of mouse number one. And you can see that there's some quite large excursions in energy expenditure. And you might wonder what is causing those. Well, um, we have used the data from the XY beam break arrays to obtain a cumulative file that shows you the number of meters run or walked by the, car, by the mouse in its cage. And in order to look at that, while at the same time keeping the kilocalories per hour on screen, we're simply going to go ahead and display the cumulative distance. So we scroll down pedestrian meters. Click the box, click OK. And there you can see that as the pedestrian meters increase, we get these large increases in energy expenditure. And you can see where the increase in meters run is flat, i.e. the mass is keeping relatively still. We have low EE and high EE during the time when the mouse is actually moving around the cage and ramping up its cumulative meters. There's another way of looking at the same data, and that is we could look at the speed in meters per second run by the mouse. So let's go along to pedestrian speed 1. And here you have, you can very plainly see that as you get appreciable uh, bursts of speed from the mass, you get increases in metabolic rate, in energy expenditure. But there are also a fair number of places where you can see some increases in energy expenditure that are not accompanied by pedestrian locomotion. And in those cases, of course, there's something else going on. I'm going to show you a quick technique for visualizing such things. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and turn the display of pedestrian speed off for the moment. We'll come back to it later. And then for the active channel, the one that we're primarily looking at, we're going to choose the food channel And this is the food uptake channel of mouse number one. This, of course, is the raw data recorded every second. Now, this is fairly confusing. What we would like is simply an indicator of when the mouse is actually feeding. You can see when it's feeding, but that's superimposed on some variations in the mass of the food hopper caused by variations in the moisture content of the air as well as by the feeding. So we're going to go ahead and create a simple indicator of when the hopper mass is really variable, and that means that the mouse is feeding. So we do a sliding correlation coefficient. And there you can see the episodes when the mouse is not feeding. The standard deviation is down around 1 or 2 milligrams, whereas when it is feeding, it gets up to 1 or 2 milligrams. Now, let's go ahead and draw display the kilocalories per hour. So we click that box. And the pedestrian running speed also for that animal. And here you can very clearly see how the animal is alternating between running and feeding. The darker green here corresponds to feeding. So really the energy expenditure trace corresponds to more or less a summation of the energy expenditure associated with running and the energy expenditure associated with feeding. 
Now, if you want to explore this for other mice, you can do so quite easily. Right now, I've only got the feeding data for this one mouse, but let's go ahead and turn that feeding information off. Which means I just need to go to the active channel for food. And instead of going to food, we're going to go to kilocalories per hour. Make sure that nothing else is displayed. And now here we have the relation between energy expenditure in blue and running speed in green. How do I change this to look at another mouse? Well, if I hold down the shift and the control key simultaneously, that transfers to mouse number two, mouse number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so on through mouse 16 in this particular setup. I'm just going to give you one quick additional tip as well. The axis that we have here, the x-axis, is in simply elapsed time from the beginning of the recording, but if you need more actual time information, the time here and date is the exact time and date at which this file ended. And if you want to know the time corresponding to any particular moment in the recording, notice this cursor in sort of a box here that I'm moving the cursor around on. Hold down the control key, and that gives you the exact date and time of the position of the cursor. Well, I hope that you found this interesting and that I've encouraged you to explore using Expedator to explore your data. I think you'll find it an interesting exercise. Thank you.